Hello, welcome along to Sportsbet TV. Paul Alster back here uh, with you, looking ahead to day three of the Yorkie Ball Festival coming up on Friday, the 19th of August. And uh, I have um, four selections for you, and they're all of good prices. Indeed, the shortest, the shortest price is 12 to 1. But don't say you don't get value here. Um, so if you're new, then press the subscribe button just below the screen because you won't want to miss out on any of the uh, tips coming up uh, going forward, which are always tasty prices. Um, well, we've uh, had one day's racing at the Knaves Mile, and I have to say, uh, for us, it was uh, profitable, which is always great to start uh, the meeting uh, with a profit. But, of course, the big highlight of day one was the brilliant performance of Bailly, who was marvellous, absolutely marvellous. Uh, just murdered Mishrif, who is a 122-something rated horse, if not a shade higher. And clearly it was one of the best uh, three or four performances we've seen over the last 30, 40 years. It was a wonderful uh, display, and he is a truly great racehorse. And, of course, uh, the champion stakes looks his uh, um, bar the shouting at uh, Ascot in October. So that was great for York. It was great for racing to have some really positive headlines about an outstanding horse. As far as day one went for us, well, I had four recommendations. Giza Sub ran pretty well, uh, was staying on nicely at the finish, but couldn't lay a glove on them, uh, finishing ninth of the 22 in the sprint. Frank and Stella, well, she caught a tartar, didn't she? She ran a blinder. Uh, what a terrific mare she is. Um, I hope you were on her each way at the 10s recommended. Alfred Boucher, who beat her, he's clearly a step or four ahead of the handicapper at this trip. Bet she had the rest. Very well beaten off. She was returned 15 to 2 from the 10 to 1 recommended. Cuban Breeze recommended at 8 to 1, returned at 11 to 2. Another of Alster's picks that got um, uh, well supported and kept on well, having been outpaced uh, for long and a half out to hold on for fourth and our each way money. And then in the last, well, Utilis uh, drifted like a barge and um, went off at 40, 40 to 1. Last. At halfway, I was beginning to think, well, this is a bit of a stumor, isn't it? Uh, but then he really did pick up, and he was finishing best of all. He finished six, getting into the uh, place money for us, recommended for six places. And I saw happily that some of you were on for the each way and got the each way treble at a, some nice prices there. So a really nice start um, to the meeting. No winners, but profits. And it's not always about winners. You know, you could have backed Baid at two to five and claimed a winner. Or you could have backed Utilis each way at 40 to 1 and um, Frank and Stella at 10s and um, Cuban Breeze at 8s. I know which way I'd like to play the game. Winners don't always make it pay. It's the ones that give you a profit that count overall. Right. Uh, we don't know the results of day two, of course. This is being recorded Thursday, uh, starting at uh, half past 10 in the morning. Uh, but what I already know is that two of my three tips have already been very well backed. There surely isn't coincidence this is happening all the time. Tyranny and C put up uh, for day two at 16 to 1 is down to 8 to 1 at this time of this recording. A real gamble going on Tyranny and C. And La Petite Coco, of course, my favourite horse, uh, recommended at 11 to 2 each way, now down to 7 to 2 for the Yorkshire Oaks. And she's second favourite now uh, behind Alpinista. And that drop of rain won't have harmed her chance. Uh, illustrating is eased out a touch to 16s from 14s. By the time you see this, you may well know what happened to those horses. On we go then um, to uh, Friday and the four recommendations. The first is in the opening race, so you won't have to wait long on Friday for a bit of a shout, hopefully. The 150 is the Skybed Handicap, over a mile and a half, and good on Skybed. £100,000 handicap here, 19 runners, they're going generally good. They're forecasting good to firm in places, but according to the Met Office, and I've been on their site because you've got to try and take all angles into account. They are expecting a potentially one or two very sharp showers to drift across West Yorkshire into North Yorkshire and possibly hit York in the early evening on Thursday. And that wouldn't be a problem for the horses I'm interested in. So I'm expecting more or less good ground. Now, the betting 15 to 2 the field, which tells you everything about this opener on Friday, Wonder Montal ban for Kevin Philippard of Foy. Very progressive, gone up five pounds for an easy Ascot success over the mile and a half four weeks ago. He won't be far away. 
Um, William Haggis has put cheap pieces on first time on Mara Jan, who was beaten in neck at HQ. He's gone up two pounds for that defeat. William obviously feels he's maybe not putting 100% in, maybe just focus his mind. Rafe Beckett's Lord Protector is moving back up to a mile and a half. He looked unlucky in a really hot race at Goodwood last time out over a mile and a quarter, where he ran on very strongly in the closing stages. Ryan Ellison, um, who did us a favour with um, uh, the horse uh, on day one, Util is running well into a place. He's got two here, Cormier and one smooth operator. Now, they're both interesting. Cormier, a really talented dual-purpose horse. You may recall him back in March winning the Moor Battle Hurdle at uh, Kelso. He went on to finish seventh in the County Hurdle and then unseated in the Swinton Hurdle when still in touch three out. Uh, he made a really good comeback after a break, switching to the flat. He won at Chester over a mile and a quarter on the last day of July. He's gone up eight pounds, but clearly he's in very good heart, Cormier. But I do like Brian's other runner, which is One Smooth Operator, and he's my choice here. Uh, Brian does well uh, at York. He, he often has horses. They might not all win, but he has plenty placed at nice prices, as we found out on the opening day. Ben Robinson rides One Smooth Operator, and this horse started out last year with David Simcock, and he won on his uh, debut over a mile and a quarter on the all-weather at Newcastle. Um, that was in March of last year. And um, eventually he left David Simcox. Um, he was gelded and he joined Brian Ellison last November. Now, on his second start for the yard, he won at Savile over a mile and three furlongs, easily taking a handicap up a mark of 81. And then he was a runner up three times, including a couple of really uh, close finishes where he was edged out before he stepped up in grade and ran in the all weather marathon at the Easter fixture and was an excellent close third to Earl of the Cotswolds in a £150,000 race. He was only beaten a length and a half or something. So this horse has really been progressing under Brian's guidance. He was um, he came back from a two-month break, and he came to York uh, for a mile and three-quarter listed race. Now, he finished last of six, and on the face of it, people that just look at the bare statistics think, well, that wasn't much good, was it? Well, actually, it was. It was. It was a good run, that last of six, because he was only beaten four and a half lengths in a listed contest. And he really shaped as though the ability is there back on turf. That was his first run back on turf, really, uh, since the previous year, having been campaigned all winter on the all weather. I thought that was a hot run, especially with, without a doubt, the winner um, rated in the 110 pluses. So. I think the horse ran a good race. He didn't run well, though, really, in the Northumberland plate. That was over two miles, the hustle and bustle in that memorable race won by the marvellous Trusha. He was only 14. But they took the view, I think, that although he's run well on the all-weather over two miles, he probably doesn't stay as well uh, on the turf. And so they dropped him back to a mile and a half at Ascot a couple of weeks ago in the old Shergar Cup, meeting I can't stand, as you know. But uh, that's not the horse's fault. He ran well uh, and he stayed on really strongly to be third there off a mark of 95. So the mile and a half on the turf, I think this is going to suit him. He's only up a pound, uh, probably an even strongly, uh, more strongly ridden race. And I think it will suit him. And um, given how well Utilis ran on day one, I can easily see one smooth operator uh, outrunning his odds, which at the moment, um, at the time of this recording, one for 14 to one each way with the best odds available for six places with Betway. It may drift, of course, but this is at this time with Betway and also relative newcomer to the market, live score bet. But we're also on one or two of the odds compilation uh, comparison sites. Uh, 14 to one each way, six places, one smooth operator in the 150 at York on Friday. Now, onto a, a race I really like at York. Um, it's the three o'clock on Friday. The Group 2 Gym Crack Stakes uh, for two-year-olds over six furlongs, 12 runners, good ground. Um, you may know that the winning owner of this race uh, has to make a speech about the state of the racing industry. And there's been one or two very interesting speeches over the years by one of the more flamboyant, one or two of the more uh, flamboyant owners. Well, the favourite is likely to be Royal Scotsman for Fitri Hay. 
It's got a three pound penalty, which is not always good in group races, of course. Uh, but it was for a very pleasing win in the Group 2 Richmond Stakes. And he does look the one to beat on that. But those three pounds could catch him out. He previously run, of course, an excellent third in the Coventry Stakes. So this is a horse who is really classy. Talented horse for Paul Cole, Royal Scotsman. Now, there's a, there's a couple that have similar profiles here. Cole Burke's Marshman and Godolphin's uh, Noble Style, trained by Charlie Appleby, was rated 103. They're both two from two, unbeaten, and they both won decent novice races last time out. It's also a similar story for Richard Farr, his clear point, who's two from two, including in a novice win last time. But stepping up from a novice to a group two race is quite a big jump. And um, it will be interesting to see if any or any of those can really um, make the grade. Now, Kevin Ryan has done well in the gym crack over the years. He's got Catch the Paddy, who won a course and distance race, so we know he likes the track. A nursery in July of 82. He's up to 90, but he's going to have to improve at least another 10, 12 pounds, I would say, to get competitive. And Carl Burke also has one here called Cold Case, who won a course and distance maiden in June. Uh, he was a beaten favourite last time out at Chester. That might have been down to the unique, tight Chester track. Um, and then at a big price, there's Richard Spencer's Waiting All Night, who might be overpriced in my view. Um, he's been fifth in both the Group 2 Coventry Stakes and the Group 2 July Stakes at Newmarket. So we know he can more or less hold his own at this level. But I want to take a chance here on a horse trained by Andrew Baldy and ridden by Tom Marquand, and that is Chateau. And Shadow is a nice horse. He won at Beverly over five furlongs in a novice stakes in May. And then he was a, a very um, good fourth at the Royal Meeting to the high class Little Brown Bear, who of course has turned into a bit of a superstar. That was in the Windsor Castle stakes over the five furlongs and he stayed on well there. He went on to Newbury and went up to six furlongs, winning the listed Rose Bowl stakes in good style, staying on really nicely. And then he was third behind Royal Scotsman uh, in the Richmond Stakes at um, Goodwood last time. Now, this is a horse who's got experience at big meetings under his belt. He's run well, um, including in the Richmond Stakes last time out. I think this more conventional flat galloping track will suit Chateau better than the Goodwood undulating and tricky camber and all the rest of it. So I think he looks very good each way value to get much, much closer to Royal Scotsman, especially he's three pounds better off due to Royal Scotsman's penalty. And at the time of this recording, uh, on Thursday morning, he is 12 to 1 each way for five places. And that's the best offer at the moment from Sky Bet. So I'm with Chateau in the Jim Crack Stakes at York each way, 12 to 1, at uh, 3 o'clock on Friday. And then on to the big race of the day on Friday, the Group 1 Nunthorpe Stakes, 15 runners over five furlongs, one of the fastest five furlong races in the world. And it is a forecast, good ground, maybe one or two spots of good to firm. Now, I'm not sure that this is as good a race as we normally see for the Nell Thorpe. Um, of course, hindsight might prove a very powerful thing on the Friday afternoon, but um, I just, looking through the race time and again, and I've been back and forwards over this race, I just don't see a, a star turn in it. Uh, I might well be wrong. But we'll see. Now, last year, I tipped the winner. That was Winter Power, who I tipped at 9-1. to one and Did it really well, Winter Power. Goes for a repeat performance, but hasn't been in the same kind of form this year, so I can't really recommend it. Now, I was actually commentating on the Nunthorpe back in 1992. Yes, a few years ago. 1992, I was commentating on the top of the grandstand there, when Lyric Fantasy won it for Richard Hannum, the pocket rocket, as she was known, a two-year-old, she was absolutely brilliant. Um, and of course, she's not the only two-year-old to have won the race in the last 30-odd years. Kingsgate Native did it for John Best as well back in 2007. And this time round, Platinum Queen's uh, um, connections have very sportingly thrown her into the mix here. But this is going to be tough, even though she is a very, very fast two-year-old. She gets all the allowances, of course. Um, who knows, but Platinum Queen is a fine two-year-old, but is she a pocket rocket? Uh, I, I don't think so. Um, although, as I say, it isn't 
the strongest of renewals. Now, the one that's favourite at the moment is Royal Acclaim, the three-year-old for James Tate, who's unbeaten and won really impressively over course and distance last time. But that was in listed company. And it's a big jump from listed to group one. What we know is this horse really likes the track and is very, very fast. If it has taken the required step forward, which after only three runs, it might well have done. And this is the one, obviously the market's found it. Uh, then Royal Acclaim could easily be the one to beat. I love Highfield Princess. She was tremendous in France, winning uh, 12 days ago, a Group 1 winner there for John Quinn and Jason Hart. But that was six and a half furlongs in France. This is five furlongs at, on the Knavesmire. Has she got the speed for it? I'm not convinced, although I'm sure she's going to put in a really bold bid. And of course, regular followers will know that I love Cardem and uh, recommended him a couple of times this season. But he really does need to improve just a little bit more once again, um, despite having uh, had such a good season and won really well in a, a hot race not too long ago. Um, and so because of all the question marks about the horses at the head of the market, I've been looking for one at a price. And I've come up with one at a very big odds here. And remember, there have been some big prize winners uh, of the um, uh, Nantop uh, in the not too distant past. And my horse um, I'm going with here is Ebro River for Hugo Palmer and Jamie Spencer. Jamie Spencer, the Marmite jockey that some of you uh, love. I love him. Some of you hate him, as you often make clear. Um, but he still is a tremendous jockey uh, when he has the right horse. Now, Ebro River was a really good two-year-old last year. It was a Group 1 winner. People seem to have forgotten it won the Group 1 Phoenix Stakes at the Curra. Um, that was a cracking performance over six furlongs. Went on. Well, he had previously won the listed national stakes very easily by over three lengths on soft ground. Um, like so many horses, uh, they don't often, don't always go on to prove as good um, as three-year-old. To be honest, the first few runs of Ebro Rivers this season, I was beginning to think, well, maybe he was just a two-year-old. Um, but then um, he ran at Chester last time out. They put blinkers on him first time, obviously feeling that he wasn't really putting his heart and soul into it. They put blinkers on him at Chester in a listed race over six furlongs, and he won really well. And uh, as I mentioned uh, just the other day of this service, the second horse there went on to win a Pontefract listed race in very good style on Sunday. And then about 10 minutes later, the fourth horse from the Chester race came out I won a red-hot handicap off a mark of 97 with a bit to spare. Now, that suggests to me that that race at Chester really was hot. Illustrating was six, and I've put that up on uh, Thursday, so it'll be interesting to see how she fares. But I saw in Ebro River that day a horse who seems to have fallen back in love with the game, and I think the blinkers have made the difference. And if they do the trick again, and if Jamie allows him to stride on, and really goes for it out in front. We know this horse stays six furlongs. He had speed to burn as a two-year-old. And if that flame has been rekindled in what I think, despite the market going 13 to wait the field royal acclaim, I think it's an open race. I'd rather be betting 40 to 1 each way, Ebro River, than 13 to 8, 7 to 4, uh, royal acclaim. So 14 to 1, 40, 4 row. Each way for four places is available at the time of this recording with William Hill, Coral, Sporting Index, Bet365, 10 Bet and others. I wouldn't be at all surprised that on the day he goes off at 50s unless, like so many of mine, they tend to be punted. Um, so I've already uh, had a bit of 40s just in case. So Ebro River to spring a surprise in the Nunthorpe Stakes, the 335 on Friday. And then very quickly onto the last uh, choice on Friday. This is the 410 race at York over the extended mile and a quarter of Phillies handicap, 11 run, probably good ground. I'm not going to go through them all, but William Haggis has a horse called Ammon Zoe, who's very progressive in this on a four timer. Has only gone up three pounds for its recent win in the Shergar Cup. Forecast three to one favourite, probably the one to beat. Roger Varian has two, who are both in a handicap first time. I've only had three runs. They're real dark horses, these two, Champion and Croke Hill. And neither of those could be dangerous, so a market move for either Champion or Croke Hill would be worth noting. 
But I'm going with a horse who I recommended last time it ran, and that is Yorkshire Lady, trained by Spitty Mick Easterby, who's still into his 90s, he's going strong. And if you've seen any of his YouTube videos, uh, his various cooking and his antics around the farm, they're absolutely priceless. He's, he's a superstar. His granddaughter, Joanna Mason, has made up into a very good jockey these days, and she's on board for Granddad. Anyway, this horse was really progressive last summer and won twice under Joanna Mason, a nine furlong handicap at Sandown off a mark of 75, and then follow up over the extended uh, 10 furlongs, same trip as Friday. That was at Haydock off 81, then went on to be fifth in a listed race in France at the end of the season. So she was really progressive last term. I tipped her on her reappearance, and uh, actually I apologise for that because... I was hopeful that because he'd sent her down to Sandown, she was more forward than she usually is, that she had tended to need a run in the past, and she ran like that. Um, she shaped as if she was coming with a run two furlongs out, and Joanna pulled her out wide of horses. Um, but she just levelled off in the final furlong, and just kept on one pace in the closing stages. But I think she's still of interest, because she showed enough there to suggest the ability is there. I think she'll be a better horse this time. She hasn't had to go all the way down to... Um, south uh, of London. She's just running down the road from Mix Farm um, and off 87, being held up and picking them off as she likes. I could see her running a very big race, Yorkshire Lady, and I'm really surprised at the odds. Generally 25 to 1, but at the time of this recording, Brett 365 are still going what I think is a very generous 33 to 1 each way for three places. Uh, shop around as ever. Yorkshire Lady, uh, I can see running a big race uh, for the Yorkshire crowd. And I think if nothing else, that would be why she's back. There'll be loads of ladies there uh, at York thinking this is the horse for me. Um, but there is the form there to back up uh, her name and give us a good run. So those are my four for Friday. Uh, make of them what you will. Uh, I hope uh, you'll give them some consideration. And if you do back them, let's hope they run very well indeed. I'm going to be back same time tomorrow with my preview of Saturday at York, which of course is Ebor Day, one of the great racing days of the year. But for now, from me, uh, Paul Alster here at Sports Bet, it's bye-bye for now. I'll speak to you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.